Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Meeting. Today we have Skeeter, our Eastern Grey Squirrel Ambassador, joining us, who is so ready for his breakfast. Skeeter, come here. Uh, today we have some chopped kale, some mushroom, um, what else we got? So a couple, some sweet potato, a couple different types of squashes that we have. Got some acorns, blueberries, sunflower seeds, his favorite treat. Um, these blocks right here called rodent chow, or lab chow. Some acorns, his favorite treats, and a little bit of lichen that he may, may or may not eat, but at least it's something cool for him to smell and look at. Skeeter, come here. Let's eat breakfast. There you go. So Skeeter is our Eastern Gray Squirrel Ambassador. Um, so Skeeter has been with us since 2013. He, we believe, probably fell from his nest. He came to us with some head trauma. Um, so he has been with us since. So he is a bit on the older side for a squirrel. Uh, so he's at about now seven. Uh, and imagine for a prey species that is pretty high. Um, squirrels are pretty typical prey for all of our different raptors and other animal predators like that. Um, so he is uh, getting up there in age, but we certainly adore him. All right, Skeeter, can I move this so you I can see your face? I know. Like, don't take my salad. You can see he's thoroughly enjoying all of his sunflower seeds right now. <laughs> They're his favorite treats. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning, Kim. Welcome. You guys always let me know where you guys are tuning in from today. If you guys have any questions, I'd certainly love to answer them. Hang out with Skeeter this morning. He's loving his breakfast. <laughs> uh, so I don't know if you, if you guys saw the first couple seconds. Um, so Skeeter would normally, right now in the wild, be trying to put on some weight. Yeah, I'm going to move it over here so that they can see you. Good boy, Skeeter. Uh, so they're going to put on some weight to help them get through the winter time. Um, and part of that is Skeeter has a lot of caches throughout his enclosure. Uh, so especially along the edges, he'll take his extra acorns or treats that he doesn't want to eat right now. And he'll go hide them. Um, in the wild, they often forget them. They forget about... 70% of their acorn caches. Um, so they hide lots and lots of acorns, um, but then those acorns then of course turn into those big adult oak trees. Uh, so then of course repeating the cycle so that they can have more acorns to find. Um, acorns are one of his favorite treats as well as sunflower seeds to munch on. <laughs> but they are responsible for all of our old growth forests and they're pretty much nature's personal foresters. Um, helping them make sure that those acorns are going into the ground and being able to grow properly. Of course, in the wild, they do still eat a, a good a chunk of them, but they do forget a lot. Good morning, Nancy. Welcome. It's Skeeter, our Eastern Gray Squirrel Ambassador, hanging out with us this morning. Yes, sunflower seeds are his absolute favorite, Nancy. Um, he will eat all the sunflower seeds, and then he, he'll ha go hide his acorns. And of course, he makes a mess, as you guys can see. He'll stick his head and dig through so he gets those sunflower seeds. Um, and then usually he'll eat like his fruits and his sweet potato. And then sometimes he'll eat his kale, but just like us, doesn't he? Thoroughly enjoy his veggies. <laughs> Let's see, he just threw the lichen I gave him. Just not too into it. And we do give our squirrels natural brows, um, our patients as well as Skeeter. Um, so that can be lichens, pine cones, acorns in this case. Um, especially right now that we are in fall going into winter, we do in the summertime give them different leaves that they would normally be eating. Uh, Skeeter is never a huge fan of the leaves, uh, so we they're more in here for decoration. <laughs> Um, to give him environmental enrichment, he doesn't usually like to eat them. Um, we will give him oak uh, branches of oak uh, so he can have the leaves and the bark and the buds. 
Um, and then some black birch. Sometimes they'll take like, little nibbles out of it. He actually we found really in relative to what he normally eats up his brows, he actually really enjoyed um, the aspen that we have here. The quaking aspen. Him and Henry really enjoy it. Um, and then a lot of times his brows turns into like this. So right now we just have a branch of beech that has already turned, um, even though he won't eat the beech. Um, but it is it's here for him to play on and smell and environmental enrichment. Yes, those are bits of mushroom, Tiffany. Um, so his salad. You can see the acorns, sweet potato, blueberry, mushroom. Um, there's two different types of squashes in there, gourds that we had. Um, so we do have, or chipping away at our pumpkins that we had for our trick-or-treating. Uh, so we are giving them to Skeeter and Henry and the rest of our patients and um, ambassadors. Bertram will get a little bit in too, as well as Ophelia. <laughs> Accidentally eating some greens while you're trying to get your sunflowers. <laughs> um, and then he has, let's see, what else I forget? The sweet potato, the kale, the lab chow, or rodent chow. Um, so Skeeter and Henry will both get that lab chow or rodent chow, um, as well as our chipmunks that we have as patients. Um, it, kind of like little vitamin blocks. Um, so it is just to give them nutrients that they do need. Um, and it just comes in these little blocks, little lab chow or rodent chow they're called. Um, so he does get a handful of them. You're such a good climber. What do you hear, Henry? I know. <laughs> Um, that's what his salad is. Um, and then we will give them a piece of natural brows just like this, some lichen, or um, if we have red skulls especially, they really enjoy pie cones. Uh, so oh. <laughs> you got an itch? Yeah. You gonna come back down? Boy Skeeter. Good morning, Naomi from Rhode Island. Welcome. We're hanging out with Skeeter, Eastern Gray Squirrel Ambassador, this morning. He munches on his breakfast. Um, we do have a little bit of oh, shower coming in right now. Uh, so Skeeter will probably eat most eat his, what he wants for his breakfast and then probably go take a nap for a little while. Um, they do, our ambassadors, as well as our patients, do kind of hunker down when we're going to have a gloomy day like today. Which I didn't think we were, but it's certainly raining right now, so. <laughs> oh, water channel. You made a mess. Like, yeah, I just want the sunflower seeds. That's the best part. Good boys, Gator. Are you not going to show off how you eat your acorns? No. Are you just going to run around with it? <laughs> uh, so Skeeter if he comes back. Can I show them your mouth? Good morning, Diana from North Berwick. Welcome. Are you going to hide it? Good boy, Skeeter. That's a good place. Yeah. Nice scratch. Uh, so Skeeter and Henry, they are both rodents. So their front two teeth are bright orange. And it's kind of like rust on metal. And so what happens is the iron in their food gets deposited into those front teeth. Like, I can't hide over here. You see me? That's a good place, Skeeter. You gonna come back? <laughs> come away, Naomi. Hi, Skeets. <laughs> You're so good. Uh, so the iron in their food, just like kind of rust on metal, the iron gets deposited into those front teeth, um, makes them very hard, which he needs to crack open nuts, just like he is right now with his acorns. Um, and then the just like how it, when it becomes oxidized with rust, that's why their teeth are br bright orange, their front incisors. 
um, because that iron in their teeth becomes in contact with the air. Uh, so that's what makes a rodent a rodent. All of our rodents have them. It makes them unique and special in their own way. And it's all from the same thing. Just trying to have those really hard teeth so they can crack nuts in. In Henry's case, break open bark. What do you think, Skeeter? You see, he filled his little, he's a little ferret pouch up there. They filled with leaves. And I had filled in this whole corner right here on the ground with leaves that he could smell and play in and hide himself in if he wanted to. And he filled his entire little ferret bed up there with them. Uh, but most of the time he does sleep in that back corner as his normal nest box. He'll sometimes he'll nap up there during the day, um, but now that it's starting to get cold, he is starting to sleep more in his full box. And um, you can see that box is filled with straw. Um, so he decided, or hay, sorry. Uh, so he he has hay throughout his enclosure to help him keep warm during the winter time. Um, and he'll fill that whole box with him with the straw himself. Um, and he has a couple fleeces that he can also cuddle in if he wants to. We're, he's pretty good though about it himself. Uh, he does have that thick fur to make sure that he can stay nice and warm. Um, and Skeeter does get a little bit of a special treatment when it gets really, really cold. Um, usually when it gets below zero degrees or colder, we'll see how close it is going to be to that, that at night. Uh, so Skeeter will either get a little heated water bottle, because normally they would kind of cuddle together. Uh, to make sure that they can all stay nice and warm during the winter time. Um, and S Skeeter, because he does live by himself, we do give him a little water bottle if he needs it. Um, or if it's going to be really, really bad, he will come inside overnight um, into our mammal room. Uh, and then we'll bring him out in the morning or when the weather has passed. Good morning, Mary from New Hampshire. Good morning, Lori from Connecticut. Good morning, Susan. Welcome, everybody. I know, Henry. I hear you. I don't know, you guys may not... I don't know if you guys can hear it on the video, but Henry is climbing his window on his other side, the front panel. And he hears me, and he's ready for his attention. <laughs> you want to go for a walk, Henry? We'll have to wait for a little bit afterwards. Hello, Skeeter. <laughs> you can go, come back down. Maybe. Good boy, Skeeter. It's amazing how they can just climb up and down. They don't... Imagine if we could climb just like that, like Spider-Man. What? Oh, am, I, am I sitting in your running zone? I'm sorry. Are you going to cash it? <laughs> Are you hiding all your acorns? Yeah. Are you going to show them how you hide things? And then you, he uses his paws to kind of scrape everything away and then he covers it back up and pats it. It's very, very cute. Uh, Tiffany, so Skeeter's story, he actually came to us after he probably fell from the nest. Um, so he was pretty young when he came to us. He had head trauma, and this is why we thought, we think that he did fall. Um, so he is a bit older now that he, he for an eastern gray squirrel, he is almost seven now. Um, and for a prey species like squirrels, that is relatively old. Um, even in captivity. <laughs> uh, so that is why Skeeter has, is with us. He's been with us since 2013. Um, so Skeeter is definitely one of our ambassadors who, when we are open to the public again, he is easier to see. Um, just because unlike Henry and Ophelia, our porcupine and our Virginia opossum ambassadors, who, when we go on programs, they can sit and eat and they're happy as can be. And we're just sitting right on a table. Skeeter, on the other hand, goes into one of 
um, our carriers that we use in our clinic. Um, and sometimes if it's too loud or if there's just too many people, Skeeter decides that he just doesn't want to hang out with us, which is oh, totally fine. It is his decision, especially if it is loud and there's a lot going on. Uh, so we, we usually don't take him so often on programs. We do let him hang out and see everyone here. Um, he's usually be easiest to see in the morning. Right now, um, he just had breakfast. Um, and as the afternoon goes on, he does start to hunker down for the night and take a nap in the afternoon. Just like we'd all love to do, Skeeter, eat breakfast and go nap for the afternoon. <laughs> Um, and that is why he is with us. Uh, so he only does a couple programs a year usually. He doesn't do a whole lot right now. So he's very often seen here at the center when we are open. Dan, I think I have some squirrels have been trying to catch acorns in my goat pen, but the goats are eating them. <laughs> yeah, they're not... So... In Skeeter's case, we say he's a bit more squirrely than the average squirrel, um, but that's why we do have the term squirrely. They're a little forgetful and out there. <laughs> um, but yeah, they will hide lots of different caches to try to get them through the winter, but like I mentioned, they do forget most of them. Um, so that's why they are responsible for all of our old growth forests. They are basically natural foresters. Uh, so they'll hide all those caches of mostly acorns. Uh, it's really the gray squirrel's favorites. Um, and then they're going to hide them, like Skeeter does, all throughout his enclosure. And then when they do forget them, they do grow, hopefully, into nice big oak trees, uh, which then repeats the cycle of those oak trees growing acorns and then dropping them for squirrels. Uh, so they really are really natural foresters and really great for us. Mm -hmm. Right, Skeeter, what do you think? You can come down. Hey, I've seen squirrels in my yard eating pine cones like corn the cob. We have tons of pine cones in our yard this year. Do you need any drop off? We are actually very well off on our own, thank you. Um, so you can see right out this window, we have a couple big pine trees right here. Um, it has definitely been a boom year for pine cones. We have them all over the place, just trying to keep our walkways clear of them because they are a bit of a tripping hazard. Um, but thank you so much for thinking of us, though, <laughs> Heidi. Um, the grays will eat them, but the, they're definitely the favorite treats of our red squirrels. Um, so we have a couple of resident red squirrel, well, not resident as in ambassadors, but resident as they live outside in the wild here at the center. Um, and they will, they've been loving all of these pine cones that are all over. And that's exactly what they'll do. They'll eat them like corn in the cob. I actually got a video of one yesterday. It ate an entire pine cone in like literally like just a minute. It was amazing. But it was super cute. It just sat there and didn't really care that I was there. Because they are pretty used to us. They do live here in the wild. But um, is their, it is their favorite treats of a lot of the red squirrels. Skeeter isn't a huge fan of it. I've tried to give him and Henry some. You tried to give one to Bertram just as something for him to play with, and he was like, what the heck is this? <laughs> Susan, can they ever find their food they hide? Uh, mine outside hide in places raccoon did, dug up. Um, so they will find some of their caches, but they do forget a lot of them, Susan. Um, so they hide them all over the place in the terms so that they can go back and find them, hopefully. Um, and if they don't go back to them, then they grow into big trees, hopefully. Um, but... Oh, Skinner. <laughs> he's covering his cash back up and he's gonna pat it. Oh my goodness. Good boy, Skeeter. So they will, uh, Susan, they will eat some of their caches, but they do forget a lot of them. Good morning, Andy. <laughs> yes, really cool, Diana. He's such a little ham. Right, Skeeter? Oh my goodness. Do you like your blueberry? Not into the squash too. 
sap. Is that a sun? Oh, that's a sunflower seed. Not as loud of a chewer as Henry, but I'm trying to get some nibble videos for you guys. Okay, get your full self, full self on your platter. <laughs> you made a mess. <laughs> I can't eat my acorn. You're watching me. I have to go hide it. <laughs> so here in Maine, we do have three different types of squirrels. Uh, so we have our eastern grays, like Skeeter. Uh, we have reds, uh, which are kind of like the chestnutty red color, like a red tail cocktail. Um, then we have northern flying squirrels here as well. Um, the reds and the grays are diurnal, like us, so they're active during the day. That's when they're going to be up and moving around and eating. And the flying squirrels are actually nocturnal, so we do have them here, but we don't see them very often um, because they are out at night. Uh, they're not truly f actually flying. Oh, yeah. Sorry, am I in your way? There. Is that better? I'll sit next to you, and then you can climb all over. Uh, so we do have the flying squirrels here. We just don't see them because they are nocturnal. Um, they are not true flyers, however. Our only true flying mammal is actually bats. And the flying squirrel is actually... If you imagine between Henry or Skeeter's front left leg and his back left leg, he's kind of going to have just this flap of skin there. So they glide. They don't truly fly. Kind of like a little parachute. <laughs> Henry, I hear you. You have to wait, bud. We'll go for a walk in a little bit. Hey, bud, I want to I want to hang out. <laughs> Skeeter, come here. What if I put your salad back? Are you going to dig it around again? Like, I got all the good stuff out. Why are you going to put everything back together, Mom? <laughs> So Skeeter, when he gets his uh, deep cleans once a month or so, we'll go through and replace all the wood chips. Um, but then daily, we do go through and like pick up all of his leftovers just like this. Uh, right before I started filming, I did pick up all of his salad from yesterday that he didn't want, that he had thrown all over the place, um, just like he did right here. Um, but he... he does hide a lot right here, but of course it does have this front window. And so a lot of the rain and stuff will come in, and so we do have to replace all the wood chips, especially up in this front area, um, because of the rain bringing in moisture. And so sometimes if we don't, it could get moldy if he dug food up and hid it places. I know. I, I cleaned up your spot. <laughs> Mom, why did you do that? Oh, which is why it is really important for us to do regular cleans in here because he does hide a lot of his food and we want to make sure that he's not going to get sick or anything from stuff like that. Uh, good morning, Victoria from Northampton. Welcome. Tiffany, how much smaller are red squirrels? Um, I'd say a little bit. Um, it's, they're like the torso of their body is a little bit smaller. Um, but not that, I wouldn't say significantly smaller, but I think they are a little bit smaller. I'm just not sure how much. <laughs> Victoria love flying squirrels. They visit your feeder every night. Aww. Yeah, they are very cool to see. Um, they have these massive eyes. Of course, squirrels in general, because they are prey items, they generally do have their eyes on the front of their head. Uh, or on the sides of their head, sorry, uh, to help, because they are prey. They need to be aware of everything that's going on. Um, and s flying squirrels in particular have these massive... They, I don't know what the ratio is compared to their skull, but their eyes look huge. Um, we have a s flying squirrel patient right now in care. Um, and looking at it, his eyes look so big for his head. He's very, very cool, though. 
Uh, Susan, can I eat cat food safely? Are steals are raccoons food? Um, I wouldn't say it's a normal diet item, um, but I'm not positive, Susan. Um, so like a lot of times our raccoons in general are really smart, so they will, that's why we see them in trash and stuff, um, cause they are gonna eat really the easy food. Um, the squirrels, however, aren't really looking for that pro protein. They will eat a little bit of protein. Um, Skeeter's diet is mostly an herbivore diet. Um, but in the wild, they may eat, like, little bugs and, um, possibly, like, a nestling or something like that. A, a, an egg. Um, but they are primarily herbivores. They will eat a little bit of protein occasionally, but not a whole lot. Um, and cat food is quite high in protein, um, so if they are eating them, um, I'm not, I'm not really sure exactly what that would impact on their diet. I know it's definitely not a normal food for them, um, because that is very high in protein, especially for an animal that doesn't eat a whole lot of protein. Um, but other than that, I really don't have a better answer for for you. I'm sorry, Susan. <laughs> what do you think, Skeeter? You gotta run it. I know it's raining. What do you think? Skeeter. It always amazes me when he climbs up on the top of, like, his ceiling. I'm like, how? How? With little Spider-Man superpowers. <laughs> it's cool to watch, but sometimes... It makes his caretaker a little nervous. Uh, because of his head trauma, we wouldn't want anything else to happen to him. But he certainly loves to show off that he is a great climber for sure. Skeeter, what do you see? I'm sorry, the only time I've seen black squirrels is in Michigan. Do we have any around here that you know of? Um, so some of, you will see black squirrels as in, like, a, um, a, it's not, melon a stick, maybe, that's what it's called. Um, but it means that they, their pigment is messed up. Um, so, some, I've seen it before where you'll have, like, all bino squirrels, and sometimes you will have those pure, like, black squirrels. Um, but a lot, they are actually just eastern gray squirrels, that their pigment is not right. Um, I'm not sh I'm not sure if there, what other squirrel species there are in the U.S. I just know that we have the three here. Uh, it's definitely something I'll have to look up. So I'm not really sure. The only thing I can think of would be a melanistic eastern gray squirrel that is all black. But you look normal-ish, Skeeter. They, this... Skeeter has this grayish brown to him, and a little bit of white on his tail and belly. And Skeeter, I know it's raining. <laughs> oh, Skeeter. So if anyone has any last questions, I can certainly answer them. Um, but otherwise, we are going to go get everyone else fed this morning. Skeeter, can you come down so you can say goodbye to everyone? Um, as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in today and continuing to still hang out with us. Uh, I certainly miss seeing all of you here on site. Um, and our ambassador, we really love still being able to bring our ambassadors to all of you from all over the world, which is really, really cool. <laughs> so, if we all have any questions, we will see you all tomorrow. Thank you, Priscilla. You ever have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Tiffany. Say bye, Skeeter. Can you come down? No. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody.